Welcome back to Palangi 21. Today I will show you Fellow Travelers Episode 5. Episode 5 begins with Hawk walks into the San Francisco General Hospital. He becomes distraught when he sees Tim having a seizure. In the past, Hawk meets Jimmy to say Leonard hasn't been home for the last two nights. Jimmy says he threw Leonard out of there last night for causing a scene. He warns Hawk to be careful since the neighborhood is crawling with cops. The police raid the gay club. Marcus and Frankie flee outside until Storm stumbles to the ground, and Marcus leaves them. Leonard is arrested, and Hawk meets his police friend to free Leonard. Later, Hawk sneaks out secretly to meet Tim. During the hearing, the group discusses Private Sheen's work and requests. Army's lawyer Welch and special counsel Jenkins ask Cohn how long he has known Sheen. Cohn says about two years, and Sheen is one of many good friends. Cohn is asked if they've double dated together. In private, Sheen complains to Cohn and insists he didn't need any special favors. Cohn tells him not to worry about Welch and Jenkins. As for Smith, he's not going to be a problem for much longer. Moments later, Tim tells Cohn that Senator McCarthy is asking for him. Senator Smith tells Hawk and Lucy that he had a visit from Senators Bridges and Welker. They claim Leonard was arrested for some sordid business and they'll expose it if the Senator doesn't resign. Senator Smith didn't believe it, but Hawk confesses it is not a lie. Since they didn't show anything, Hawk doubts they have any hard evidence. Senator Smith should tell them that he'll back off McCarthy. Hawk explains they're just trying to stall until they can destroy the record. Senator Smith tells Lucy to keep Leonard out of there because he can't stand to look at him now. Hawk promises to do everything he can to bury this. Senator Smith is worried that Leonard will do it again. Hawk says there are places that help men like Leonard. He tells him not to blame himself because it is just one of nature's mistakes. Outside, Lucy tells Hawk that she met two men in Madrid who called themselves traveling companions. She explains that she saw a look on the man's face similar to one she had seen on Leonard's face before. Lucy argues that Leonard can't help who he is. Cohn approaches Tim in the bathroom and remembers he was recommended by one of Senator Smith's donors. He asks Tim what he thinks about Smith. Tim says he respects Senator Smith, but he still believes in the anti-communist cause. Cohn asks about Leonard being a homosexual. Tim insists he wouldn't know whether the rumor is true. Cohn thanks him for the package he gave to Sheen. Tim claims someone left the package on his desk. Cohn tells Tim he is a bad liar. In private, Tim tells Hawk what happened with Cohn. Hawk eventually says the envelope contained a letter from Corporal Daniel Cherney stating that McCarthy got him drunk and sodomized him. It stuck McCarthy, Cone, and Sheen together in this current situation. Frankie tells Marcus he thought he forgot about him. Marcus argues it isn't safe for him. He tells Frankie about his father, and it means a lot to his father to see his writing. Leonard talks to Lucy about going away. She told their mother that his drinking has gotten out of hand so he is going to a place to dry out. Since Smith hasn't been pressed to resign, Hawk doubts they've found Leonard's arrest record. In private, Leonard tells his dad that he stopped being his son the day Hawk showed up. Leonard alleges that his father made him this way. Once he leaves, Senator Smith admits Hawk took his place and he let it happen. During the hearing, Cohn is asked about the photo and whether he submitted it as evidence. Cohn claims that Secretary Stevens asked to be photographed with Sheen. Tim tells Marcus that the photo isn't right because he saw it in their office. Hawk speaks to a doctor about the treatment given to homosexuals. He learns that they're using shock therapy. Hawk says they believe Leonard will benefit from having limited contact with the outside world. Outside, Leonard tells Hawk he has been thinking about the first summer he spent time at their house. Leonard remembers that they masturbated together. He thought about telling his father about Hawk, but Hawk argues his father would never believe him. Gene questions why McCarthy didn't fire Cohn when he had the chance. Gene wonders if Cohn has something on him. McCarthy claims a man from Wisconsin wouldn't turn on his fans. She argues a man from Wisconsin would know how to get his wife pregnant. Tim approaches McCarthy to say Cohn did something to the photo. McCarthy reveals he was once voted the worst senator in Washington. Lesser men would have crumbled. Instead, he went to West Virginia and gave a speech to a bunch of ladies who applauded. He is now one of the most powerful men in America. Tim leaves without mentioning the photograph again. Later, he gives Welch's receptionist an envelope. Marcus talks to his boss about covering the Senate. His boss doesn't seem eager to give him that job. During the hearing, Welch presents the unaltered photo. Sheen claims that Stevens asked him to stand next to him for the picture. He admits he never saw the other prints before the meeting. Later, Sheen tells Cohn that he is going to New York to spend time with his family. He argues that he isn't like Cohn because he is normal. 
Tim approaches Hawk to tell him he had to quit his job. When Hawk says he is going out, Tim asks him to take him too. Hawk doesn't want Tim to read about it, so he tells him he is going to marry Lucy. An upset Tim walks away. Senator Smith reveals that he got a call from Senator Welker and they found Leonard's arrest record. If he resigns, they'll keep Leonard's arrest record under wraps. Senator Smith says this will hound Leonard for the rest of his days even if he is cured. He insists that Lucy will be fine because she is Hawk. While he writes his resignation letter, Tim fills out an application for enlistment. Senator Smith kills himself. Hawk comforts Lucy during the funeral. Marcus meets Frankie who asks if he is worried someone from the post might see him. Marcus doubts he is much of a future there. He has received a few calls from a new publication called Jet Magazine. As for Frankie, he is going on the road with Storm, and when he comes back he wants his own apartment. Tim hears on the radio that Cohen has resigned from the committee. McCarthy's approval rating is plummeting. When Hawk arrives, he learns that Tim is due at Fort Dix in two days. Hawk says he is not going to wait for him. He wants to take Tim somewhere. Once they arrive, Tim says he is sorry about Senator Smith. Hawk says he didn't raise his boy to be a soldier, but Tim is adamant he has to go. Tim goes on to say he has to get over Hawk. He makes Hawk promise that he won't write. In the present, Hawk sits on Tim's hospital bed and touches his hand. I thought this episode would center on Tim and Hawk's relationship, but it turned out to be filled with politics. It's very disappointing because there is potential for an emotionally gripping traffic love story with Hawk and Tim. I keep waiting for something significant to happen that drives a wedge between Hawk and Tim and leads to their current situation. Hawk and Tim's relationship should get most of the runtime for each episode while the political stuff should be a side story. What we can see is that some of the characters are likely closeted gays. They struggle with their own issues, such as Leonard going through conversion therapy, McCarthy marrying Jean to hide himself, and the possibility that Cohn and Sheen are a couple. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notification.